Hey, welcome back to the Spectre Creative Channel. I'm your host, Scott Toyguru Nightlick. And uh, if you're familiar with the game of chess, you probably know things like the fact that the horsey moves in an L shape. Okay, well, it's not the horsey and it's not an L shape either. But chess is a game of strategy and a big part of it is known as the end game. And, well, if you're not familiar with the concept of Endgame from chess, hopefully at least you're familiar with it from the Avengers movie, right? Endgame meaning the final battle. Well, it doesn't necessarily mean the final battle. It more means when you approach victory, when you're approaching uh, where, you know, a completion, a, a finite ending, a goal is going to be achieved. You're either going to win or you're going to lose. That's what an Endgame is. It, it's not necessarily you know, actually the end of something. It's more the beginning of the end. But now, finally, I got myself a new goal. World domination! <laughs> All right, well, maybe world domination is a bit too much of a goal, but in toy collecting, we do have a very definitive goal, and it tends to be collect them all. It's a mantra, it's a saying, it's, I mean, heck, it's right there on packaging. It started with superpowers in the 1980s, putting it right there above the cross cell, literally telling kids that they could collect them all, that there was a, a goal, that there was an, an, a sense of achievement. There was something. It wasn't just, you know, buy all these toys, you know, buy my book, buy my book. But it was about, you know, you can have all the entire collection. It, it's possible to actually achieve this. And that's what I want to sort of talk about today in terms of toy collecting, because it's a very, very unique part of the hobby. And sometimes it's difficult to put a pin on collecting them all. For example, I like X-Wing pilots. And when do you have them all? Every character that's been on screen? Same thing with like Jabba's Palace or the Cantina. You know, is having every single Cantina alien or, you know, alien from Jabba's Palace Part of your collection, complete. I mean, heck, my Star Wars collection keeps growing every year, and it doesn't seem like there's an end in sight as far as three and three fourth. even if I'm buying the same Han Solo and trench coat year after year. So for a lot of Star Wars fans, it's actually more about the 92 or 96, however you want to do the math, if you count the variants of R2, C-3PO, and Yak Face. But having the vintage collection redone in the modern line tends to be more of an achievable goal than getting every cantina alien. Which is why the character here, Sima Lu, the imperial dignitary from the vintage line, is so important. He is the only character, well, I guess outside the mustached Bespin guard, that has never been done in the modern line. And Hasbro used to kind of say, oh, no, it has been done. We've done the Imperial Dignitary. We did this guy. Well, no, that's not the Imperial Dignitary from the vintage line. And that's sort of the key point, is as collectors, we are very attentive to detail. And we're aware that with the Imperial Dignitaries, for example, there are several of them. Some of them look more like munchkins than others, but they are all different. This is the guy that we want, Similu, the one that was in the vintage line from the 80s. That would complete the original 96 or 97, 98, however you want to do the math. Something like Marvel Legends is a little different, though, because, well, with so many different variants of characters and so many different teams, saying you have them all, can you collect them all? Well, I mean, yes, you could own every single Marvel Legends ever, but that tends to be a little daunting. So a lot of Marvel Legends collectors, I find, from discussing online and at conventions and in comic book shops, tend to buy by team, like the Fantastic Four or maybe the New Warriors. So that way they can say, oh, I have a full team, and that's the way they collect. That's how I collect, actually. So my Marvel Legends collection tends to come from the 1991-1992 X-Men characters, as well as Spider-Man characters, specifically Spider-Man villains. And my rationale for collecting these toys, well, with X-Men, it's because I loved the X-Men animated series. As a kid, it was a big part of my adolescence. And I never had the Toy Biz toys. I used to look at them, look at the cross-sells. I've talked about this in other videos. So buying the Marvel Legends version is kind of like uh, sort of getting back what I always wanted in my childhood or, you know, sort of making things right. I never had the X-Men animated series toy line as a child, so now getting the Marvel Legends version is sort of like fulfilling that unfulfilled childhood need to have X-Men toys. So, yeah, I mean, it kind of, you know, completes us as collectors as being able to achieve those childhood goals, but 
with something like Marvel Legends, since I choose to collect X-Men characters or, you know, the other X teams, I also want to get X-Factor. And I can't complete this team without Wolfsbane. So that becomes sort of a beacon of, you don't have, you don't have. Yes, they did a Wolfsbane in her new mutants outfit, which, yes, that is Wolfsbane, but much like the Imperial Dignitary I mentioned earlier, we don't want just a random Imperial Dignitary or Wolfsbane in one of her many outfits. We want the version that was from the Vintage line, or in this case, from 19, for me, for 1992 X-Men, which is this Wolfsbane when she was in her X-Factor outfit. So until this version comes out, much like the Imperial Dignitary, same thing. Or like X-Force, another one of the, uh, you know, the sub-X teams from the early 90s, still waiting for Feral. Until Feral comes out, can't have a complete team. And, you know, great that we're finally getting Domino and we're getting Cannonball with his legs, finally. But, yeah, Feral, we need her to complete the team. And, you know, there's some villains out there that I haven't gotten either. I'd like to complete the uh, Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and... Yes, I know they've had a lot of rotating members, so you kind of have to choose. But for me, again, it's that 92 version. And I know a lot of them have been made, but some of the characters, like uh, Blob here, I didn't pick up when Hasbro started making Marvel Legends again. I didn't like the quality at the time, so I missed him. And now he goes for, like, major bucks on the aftermarket. So kind of hoping for a re-release. Same thing with Toad. I never picked up Toad because... Well, he was in the very first wave of Marvel Legends, and back then I didn't just—I hadn't decided I was collecting Marvel Legends yet. Didn't know, you know, the line was going to get as big as it was. Interesting note, though, about this Toad is he wasn't designed for Marvel Legends. He was actually part of the Mutant Evolution two-packs put out for the first X-Men movie, except the only one that came out was Wolverine. The one that was going to be movie Toad and comic book Toad never made it to market, but they had the sculpt done, so that's why Toad is sort of that odd man out in the Marvel Legends first wave from Toy Biz, because he was designed for the X-Men movie as a two-pack. So yeah, you get Hulk, Iron Man, Captain America, and Toad. So as I also noted, my other big thing is Spider-Man villains. So I like collecting X-Men 1992-ish, and I like collecting Spider-Man villains. I mean, I have Spider-Man too, but there's only one Spider-Man. And obviously, I can shout till I'm blue in the face about wanting Spot, but he's not the only Spider-Man villain missing from my collection. For me personally, much like I got into X-Men from the 1992 animated series, one of the first Spider-Man storylines I read was the Deadly Foes of Spider-Man. This was sent to me at summer camp by my parents. And this was a big introduction to Spider-Man, so I want those versions. I, it's great that Marvel Legends has made Boomerang as one of Spider-Man's villains, but I don't own this version of Boomerang, and it doesn't, for me, count. I want the version of Boomerang from that time period, from Deadly Foes, or also, you know, the way Eric Larson drew him, uh, the way he, you know, appeared in the early 90s. Same thing with Rhino. I want Rhino as he appeared in Deadly Foes of Spider-Man. What can I say? This was the era that introduced me to Spider-Man, and I want to be able to recreate villains from this era. So, while we've had a lot of different rhinos released over the years, most recently a Build-A-Figure that came with two different heads, this is more of a modern rhino. It's not the rhino from uh, the, the late 80s, early 90s. Really, the one that comes closest is this one, which was literally the very first pre-Marvel Legend release when it was Spider-Man Classics. And I also, much like Toad, I passed on this because I didn't know if the line was going to make it or not. So I know that there's rumors we're supposed to get a Rhino release on a vintage Spider-Man card, much like we've gotten things like Sandman and Kingpin and a couple retail waves. But likely that Rhino is going to look like this. It's going to look like from the animated series. It's not going to have the shoulder pads or the uh, bracelets or anklets, whatever you want to call them, uh, you know, that he had in Deadly Foes. Yes, I know, I know, I get it. Like, my anal retentive collecting meter is crazy and off the charts, but we're kind of all like this. We want what we want. We want the version we want. And with prices going up, I do have to say, I'm really glad that I own 95% of what I want. I have almost every X-Men character and almost every Spider-Man villain. There's a few standouts out there, you know, Spot, Feral, etc., etc., but the thing is, unlike games, which can be cost-reduced, like they've done with Monopoly by making the chance, community chest, and properties all the same cards, making the tokens lighter, not as much metal, well, you can't cost-reduce the Marvel Legend the same way. You can put out less expensive versions of superheroes, but these aren't Marvel Legends. This is a different line. Marvel Legends 
black series, these are things that can't be cost reduced and keep the same quality. So the prices have to go up. So in a way, it's not as much that the end is near with prices going up. It's that I more feel like goal achieved. I have every character I want. Now, granted, again, I'm waiting for a few standouts, but much like Previous lines like Justice League Unlimited, which I got the privilege to work on and fought like heck to get Blackhawk into that line, that was a huge victory. Well, I'm glad Justice League Unlimited is over. And the reason is, is because you can collect them all. You can own every single Justice League Unlimited figure. Granted, some of them are very expensive on the aftermarket these days. And yes, I know I got a lot of them because I worked on the line, but that's not the point. The point is, the line is over. I mean, yes, you can get animated style versions of these characters, like from McFarlane, but that's not part of the JLU line. This is a 7-inch figure, not a 4-inch figure, and it's got more articulation. Same, you know, from the same series, but not the same toy line. Justice League Unlimited, the, you know, the door has shut on that. It is, is complete. It is over. And the ability to collect them all, that's what I meant by the end game, is that, you know, you, you, it's achievable, much like Motu Classics. I know a lot of people want Motu Classics to continue, and I'll admit it would be really cool. But again, Motu Classics is done, and you can own them all and feel that sense of accomplishment. You can buy Origins, you can buy Revelation, you know, Masterverse, but it's not the same line. Classics is done. Sure, there are more characters that could be done, of course. I mean, there's countless characters that could still be done in Classics. And there's characters that we planned on doing in Classics that were part of the 2016 line. I've done a few videos on those. That unfortunately never made it to market. But for ill or will, better or worse, Masters of the Universe Classics, Justice League Unlimited are done. So you can collect them all. There's, there's not going to be this, you know, forever trying to catch more figures, trying to build more Jabba's Palace, trying to get, you know, more versions of, you know, Captain America or Iron Man. They'll probably be limitless. It's the opposite of something like Hot Wheels. Hot Wheels is never going to end. The 2022 you know, Hot Wheels figures, uh, vehicles are already hitting. It, Hot Wheels will never end. I like being able to sit back in my chair and you know look at my toy line and say, I did it. I collected them all. I've got everything. To me, that's the end game. It's the mission accomplished. It's not the fact that figures will go on forever and ever and ever. It's the fact that you can own the collection you want. So... Getting that Imperial Dignitary and, heck, spot for Marvel Legends, I will never stop bitching to get them until they happen, because I want to collect them all. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of hit on some of the interesting, unique, emotional aspects of our hobby. Let me know what you think in the comments below. How do you define your collection? What are your limits? And uh, what figure is out of reach that you're waiting for? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.